A day that began with silent player protests before the game ended with the Clippers losing game four of this series to the Warriors. But the story, of course, remains Clippers owner Donald Sterling and the racially charged remarks he is alleged to have made. Clippers players were reluctant afterwards to discuss on the record what they thought about their boss or what they plan to do going forward. Can I ask why you're only taking basketball questions today? Because that's all that matters right now is basketball. You know, we got a, a series to win. That's it. That's all we did. We lost the game tonight. That's all we were focused on was winning or losing, and we lost. Uh, Chris, is it harder to give your all to a team in a situation with such an ugly reminder of who owns the team? Nope. Oh, because, I mean, it's about those guys in, those lock in the locker room. You know, our guys, our teammates, uh, you know, we prepare. We've been through training camp and stuff like that, and this is what we love to do. Listen, I, I just believe when the game starts, the game starts, and nobody cares anymore. Uh, Golden State surely didn't care. And uh, it's just like when a player plays with an injury. They don't care that you're injured. They're going to come out and they're going to try to attack you. So if we were injured physically or mentally, uh, the other team doesn't care, and they really shouldn't care. Uh, because it's a competition. I thought we competed, but uh, give them a lot of credit as well. Uh, it wasn't just the distraction of everything that's happened in the last 24 hours. You know, Golden State played a great basketball game. Let's let's keep that in mind. We're going home now, and usually that would mean we're going to our safe haven. Um, and I don't even know if that's true. The Clippers will not practice on Monday. Tuesday could bring anything. There have already been requests made for protest permits outside of Staples Center, and the possibility remains for additional actions by the Clippers players inside. Two days ago, all this team wanted to do was beat Golden State. Now, even going home will not ease the pressure on a group of men who have come to represent anything but the game of basketball. In Oakland, I'm David Aldridge. We didn't execute very well. We held the ball way too often. We had mismatches we could drive. We just, we held the ball too much. We didn't, uh, we didn't attack enough, <clears throat> and we had, uh, we, had, we had a ton of opportunities. Like it was, that wasn't the fourth quarter. It was the third quarter. We had three consecutive breaks where we botched them up. Where we, you know, we were up 11, you know, could have got up 17. Uh, well, it's not exhausting if you win them. It's exhausting if you lose them. We've lost two of the three, so we had opportunities. I mean, we just have got to, you know, we've got to, we got to play our game. And and, and again, I've said it all along. You know, we we um, there were loose balls. We didn't get some of the loose balls. We didn't get some of the little plays. And those those plays end up end up hurting you. I mean, at the end of the game, we have a chance to make a three. We don't get the ball the guy we're trying to get it to, and they end up with a steal. I mean, we got to throw the ball ahead. We're not throwing the ball ahead. We're not, a, you know, we're. Damar, what an effort down the stretch there, especially with basically your whole team struggling with some injuries. What can you say about the way you battled in those final six minutes down there? That's, we had no choice. We wanted this game that bad. We had no choice. We had to do it with our defense. We weren't making no shots in the second half. We just had to buckle down on defense. You mentioned that defense. What was the key? And you hold Joe Johnson to just seven points as well. Throwing, throwing different looks at him every time he caught the ball. Trying to double team him, keep the ball out of his hands, blitz him and screen the rolls. You know, keep the ball out of his hands as much as possible. Darren, you guys are a veteran team, and poise is supposed to be an advantage. Does that make these late game struggles a little bit more frustrating or perplexing? Yeah, I think so. You know, like you said, I mean, this is where we should be at our best. You know, in those late game situations. You know, we've been here before. You know, they're a younger team has doesn't have as much playoff experience, but um, you know, they're, they're playing like it. We're playing for our life, man. They still are. We're not. We're not happy. We're not satisfied. We want more. You know, we got another game on Wednesday, and then. We gotta remain humble and remain focused. You know, they're earning a lot of people's respect around the league. And, uh, you know, just because you don't have a lot of playoff experience doesn't mean you're not a good team. I remember my first playoff game, once I played a couple games, I was like, you know, I was comfortable. <laughs> it was like, okay, this is the playoffs, uh, let's play. And so, you know, that's what you're seeing with them. You know, they're not gonna go away, so we understand that. First playoff road win since 2001. How much confidence is this team taking back to Toronto? We got a lot of confidence. Go back home on the home floor with our fans and try to get the next game. The way we started the game is it's been like the same thing over and over again. 
they come out, they always hit us first. Like like Tip says, the games are a 15 round uh, slugfest, but for it to go that far, you gotta really have a, a good start. You gotta hit them first, especially on the road. And uh, we was on our heels from the jump. Even with the news of Nene, uh, when it came of, of being suspended, I, I, I saw our guys bond together, like, that's okay, all right? Big fella's not gonna be here, but that's okay. We're uh, a smart enough group to understand that when one of your one of your pieces go down, you have to you have to find ways and will ways to win. And tonight, you know, tonight was my night to 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 take on the scoring load. They have a lot of weapons. The Wizards have a lot of weapons. But uh, that being said, I think they're beatable, and we just gotta find a way. I know to win a playoff series, it takes four. So we're gonna concentrate on getting two and we'll go from there. No, I'm not gonna mess with you. I know I'm gonna lose that battle. Smart move, man. I'm gonna lose that battle. Smart move, man. You're a smart guy, man. That's what I like. <laughs> I'm your safety. When they double you, I'm your safety. Kick it. And then if they stay with you, I'll give it back to you. Time out! Time out! Time out! Ha ha! That's what happens when you run, PG! Lance, don't size it up. Move it. Shoot it, drive it, move it. Hey, come here. Pick your head up, get focused. Let's go. Great team. Great team, Lance Stevenson. Great team, number one. Great team. Put together three or four stops in a row. Can't be making it up, and we got to do the hard thing every time. Now you're playing. Now you're playing. A little bit of ugly. Watch that defense down there. A little bit of contact. Keep driving it, keep attacking. A little bit of ferociousness. It's the freaking playoffs. 